All right. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on how to protect your business against retail theft. I am Daniel Degu, representing the city of Cupertino. Today's webinar is a collaborative effort between the city of Cupertino, the Santa Clara County Sheriff's Office, and the Cupertino Chamber of Commerce. Today, we are here to raise awareness about a common concern that affects businesses of every size, retail theft. Throughout this webinar, our esteemed speaker, Captain Omori, will delve into various aspects of retail theft. The objective of this webinar is to provide you with actionable insights and resources that, can, that you can implement in your business to deter theft. I want to extend a special thank you to our partners, the Santa Clara County Sheriff's Office, the Cupertino Chamber of Commerce, for their invaluable support in organizing this webinar. Their expertise and collaboration have been instrumental in bringing together today's informative session. Without further ado, let's meet the people who made this webinar happen and then jump into the presentation. We'll start with the um, City of Cupertino, Deputy City Manager, Tina Kapoor. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, and we will today we'll talk about this critical issue in, in today's retail landscape and in our communities, um, delving into some comprehensive strategies to com combat this issue. And I do want to thank our partners, the Santa Clara County Sheriff's Office, who's here today, uh, the Chamber of Commerce, and of course, Cupertino's own economic development and emergency management staff. Um, and the video team to help us do this webinar. So without further ado, uh, welcome, and I will turn it over to Tom Chin. Good morning, everyone. My name is Tom Chin. I'm the emergency manager for the city of Cupertino, and I work very closely with the sheriff's office and our public safety partners. Hi, I'm Deborah Fang, CEO of the Cupertino Chamber of Commerce, and uh, the Chamber of Commerce is the business advocate for the city. Good morning. My name is Mario Ledesma. I am a sergeant with the Santa Clara County Sheriff's Office, and I am the supervisor for our organized retail team. Good morning. Brendan Amore, captain with the Sheriff's Office. I oversee the Special Enforcement Division um, that houses a number of our specialized units, including our high impact team um, that is that was stood up in January to really target organized retail theft and specifically in the West Valley region of our county. Good morning, I'm Joe Piazza, Lieutenant with the Santa Clara County Sheriff's Office. I'm the Assistant Division Commander in our Special Enforcement Division. I supervise a number of those specialized teams uh, within our division, including our high impact team. Good morning, everyone. Captain Neil Valenzuela, uh, in charge of patrol services for the city of Cupertino, Saratoga and Los Altos Hills. Great. With that, Captain Amori, are you ready to begin your presentation? Absolutely. Um, just just a quick uh, housekeeping. Is someone else going to be going through the slides then? Yes, I'll control the slides for you. Got it. Uh, good morning, everyone. I uh, appreciate everybody's uh, time in, in attending the webinar today. It's really our intention to share a little bit about the Sheriff's Office efforts uh, to combat organized retail theft, um, some, some easy measures that you as retailers can take um, in order to safeguard um, or better safeguard your businesses. And then really the, the main uh, component of this is really networking, identifying uh, or putting faces to names um, so that we can um, collaborate in the future and really the collaboration between law enforcement and the retailers is really what's going to uh, win the day in our, our fight against uh, retail theft and the impacts that it, it brings to both the retailers and the, the community at large. So what is organized retail theft? And I, I assume most of most of you understand what retail theft is. However, um, there is some nuance because there is a, a dedicated statute within the California Penal Code. It's 490.4 for organized retail theft as opposed to a petty theft or um, 
uh, burglary or, or some other crimes for, for that matter. But really what had happened since Proposition 47 was enacted is that the, the penalties for theft really decreased to the extent that a lot of them turned into misdemeanors, um, which typically does not involve jail time, typically involves maybe probation, maybe some, some fine type penalties, some restitution, et cetera. Um, but really, if we're able to establish that a group of people, and the statute says two or more people that steal merchandise with the intent to resale, then it becomes a felony. Um, and I should include the caveat that there is a $950 threshold for the theft. However, if we're able to attribute uh, multiple thefts that aggregate to 950, we're able to, to hit them with that felony charge as well. There are other nuances, subsections, such as receiving or, or possessing stolen property that we can establish came from organized retail theft or being an, origin, uh, an agent coordinator, financier, or recruiter. So this statute's really impactful in that it does make these crimes a felony. And what I've seen with other jurisdictions is they're starting to stack them as far as each individual action of organized retail theft is a separate felony. So it can be impactful in combating this um, from that regard. I don't wanna speak necessarily for the district attorney's office, but I can say in my experience of over 18 years with this county is that they are very aggressive and we're working closely with them and in, in filing, um, filing charges on folks that are involved in organized retail theft. So a, qu a question that, that needs to be answered is how does organized retail theft or ORT affect the community? And the majority of you see it from a business perspective, but it also does impact our community. Um, in 2022, it was reported uh, around the nation that all retailers lost uh, over $112 billion in merchandise. That's a pretty steep um loss and it's it's manifested in a number of ways um, one as you all know and are very keen to is your customer shopping experience and customer customer autonomy that is significantly decreased with retail theft um, you you all have had to take additional security measures for your products a lot of things have various um, security measures or even have to be locked up behind uh, glass or cabinet in order to protect the high high value assets. Um, car locks, um, that's, that is uh, like any technology, it's not always foolproof. Sometimes it's, it's frustrating when it'll lock up when it's not supposed to. Things of that nature, we've seen those impacts for our customers. Um, you as retailers, sometimes in order to recover from the loss, you're, you're often in a place where you have to raise your prices on goods. And that also is transferred over to the customer. Um, and it also does not help in our overall landscape with inflation concerns. In extreme measures, and although the goal that we have seen of many individuals committing retail theft is they are trying to do it discreetly and not necessarily be confrontational, although in some extreme circumstances, we've seen um, confrontations between the thieves and store employees. Um, I know there's a lot of retailers that have specific policies where it's more an observe and report trend, and that's what we would um, encourage you all to employ as well. Be the best witness that you possibly can for us and then collaborate with us on the back end. And we um, are very successful in that regard. Um, and then in the very, very extreme cases, as we've seen, uh, Target is one of the highlighted um, companies that's had to do this. But in extreme cases, some retailers are forced to close stores down based on the amount of theft.
Next slide, Daniel, if you could. So this is a this is an issue that's bigger than any one local jurisdiction. This is something that's being addressed by the state. If you aren't all aware, last year the uh, the state through the uh, BSCC posted a grant of over two hundred forty two million dollars that was available competitively for sheriff's offices, police departments, and probation departments um, to to seek funding to help combat uh, organized retail theft, motor vehicle theft, motor vehicle accessory theft, and cargo theft. So um, we, as the Santa Clara County Sheriff's Office, submitted a proposal and it was accepted and we were awarded just under $12 million over the three-year grant performance period to pursue, um, aggressively pursue measures to uh, prevent and disrupt organized retail theft in our county. Um, and we are primarily focusing our efforts on retail theft. We do have a, a branch of my division that focuses on the vehicle theft aspect. Um, however, the new unit created the high impact team solely and primarily focuses on organized retail theft. As I explained, the high impact team specializes in these investigations It consists of one sergeant, Sergeant Ledesma, that um, you all met, as well as four detectives. They are in an undercover capacity, so you may not even know that they're in the area at times. We have a variety of different investigative avenues and techniques that we use to combat retail theft. And to give more of uh, a history on how the, this impacts not only you all, but our office is that the West Valley Division has dedicated property crime detectives, and they traditionally would be the ones to investigate organized retail theft. However, that wasn't their only responsibility. With, that, with those positions comes your residential burglaries, um, standard thefts, sometimes up to certain robberies, Estes robberies, uh, identity thefts. So they had a, a wide variety of responsibilities where they could not focus their efforts entirely on retail theft. That's where this new high impact team comes in. It alleviates that pressure off of the property crime detectives and provides more service with, re with regards to these crimes. Uh, another, I'm sorry, Daniel, if you can go back. We had a multi-pronged approach to how we, we feel we can best impact this for the community. Um, we're also going to be rolling out dedicated marked units for physical per, uh, presence and deterrence, which we think um, will also assist in essentially saying not in our community. Um, we are continuing to provide outreach such as this webinar. Um, and we've had individual meetings with various loss prevention groups and um, district managers for different retailers. And we're happy to pass along information afterwards on how you can connect with our team. And then lastly, leveraging technology. We're in the process of getting a product called Peregrine, which is a data aggregator. And there are a lot of law enforcement databases and different uh, data feeds that we can access evidence to help our prosecutions and our efforts. Um, although it's tedious at times to log into 15 to 20 different databases, this technology leverages that and brings it into one home. So we are trying to be progressive in, in technology, the technology space as well, to better impact our um, efforts. This is a huge um, point of emphasis for our sheriff, Robert Johnson. He truly believes in building community partnerships, and especially with regards to retail theft. He's been quoted, um, as he's talked about this in a number of spaces and in the media, that it's these partnerships that really allow us to be effective in deterring and apprehending and apprehending suspects involved in organized retail theft. I too share that same sentiment. And um, we have a brief case study at the end, uh, a recent case that the 
High Impact Team was able to successfully resolve, and that was through great partnerships. I'll briefly just skim over the goals and objectives for our office, but we've kind of already discussed them. Uh, we have our dedicated team to impact retail theft, and we really think our measurables will be in the areas of increasing our referrals to the district attorney's office, increase in um, stolen merchandise recovery, a decrease in loss to you all as retailers, and being able to compare those statistics year over year to illustrate our impact. And this is where we really start our discussion and how you can better protect yourselves. And we believe that these measures here will really help in addition to law enforcement, how we can reduce the amount of retail theft out of, out of your respective stores. So one is video surveillance. Video surveillance is very key. This is a technology driven age and really identifying folks is very key to prosecution. And uh, any district attorney can tell you that, that one of the main um, challenges or hurdles that they have to overcome is uh, identification of suspects. So if we can clearly identify them and their conduct, it's gonna be easier and that really video systems have been very helpful, whether it's in store or out in the parking lot. So consider um, what video security systems you have and, and potentially some upgrades to those. Uh, Home Depot is a great um, a great example as they have a robust video system within their stores, but they also, because they had been the target of so many thefts, they leveraged the technology and video systems to um, incorporate Flock, which is a license plate reader system in their parking lots, um, which has ultimately helped resolve some cases for them. So consider your video systems and potential upgrade. Um, Anti-theft signage. Um, showing that your store is keen to theft and that you don't tolerate it is also very key. So again, it's not any one of these measures that will totally impact this. It's a combination of all these things that we believe are best practice and will really deter these folks from trying to hit your store. They may go to another location that's not as proactive about protection, but um, we believe by having signage in key places is, is significant. Consider re redesigning your store layout to reduce blind spots. That's typically what we see is that folks will go down any given aisle and go to a corner or somewhere where um, they're, they're not captured by video cameras or they feel like they're not being um, watched. And that's where things, uh, different techniques that we've seen, whether it's um, the code switching, whether it's tag switching, um, whether it's taking something out of its uh, designated container or packaging, um, <clears throat> those blind spots really are an attractive location for thieves to conduct their business. So consider trying to reduce those. And if you can't do that, maybe leverage the use of mirrors. RFID tags are very important. Um, there have been some retailers that we know of that have been very successful in tracking stolen merchandise, especially high value items by the use of RFID tags. That's very beneficial for my team to be able to real time track. And um, I, should, I should say that some of the feedback related to RFID is that there are some jurisdictions that will not pursue that and therefore the retailers, the feedback is that it's not, the juice isn't worth the squeeze. I'm here to tell you that if you're in sheriff's office jurisdiction, we will pursue RFID hits and try to um, actively and aggressively pursue the, the recovery of those items. So consider the use of RFID. 
Lock up high value items. That's kind of a no brainer. Um, increase customer service. Uh, tech, uh, what we have seen with, with these thieves and these groups is that they're constantly looking around. They're not looking at merchandise. They're not perusing aisles. They're looking out for your staff. So train your staff up on how to provide excellent customer service. And the more that your staff is around, present, um, and asking to help folks, the more it deters them because it's kind of like the 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 gnat um, that sticks around. And we've seen that as a great deterrent measure. And lastly, and this is where I want to really hammer this home is please collaborate with us. We've noticed a trend of underreporting, and if we don't know about a theft, we're not going to be able to follow up on it. And um, it's really important. I know that there are certain uh, policies in place with certain organizations on, on the dollar amount that we report or when we report, but time is of the essence. And the longer you wait to report theft, the likelihood of us recovering your product is, is slimmer by the day. So please collaborate with us. Please help us um, with the best evidence, whether it's your security footage, whether it's um, some, of, some of you all have very robust um, uh, asset management and um, and different measures in place help us help us with that information and that will go a long way. And lastly, we, we do attend our the um, San Francisco Bay Area Orca meeting and a lot of retailers attend that. That's a great space to collaborate and share information. So consider joining those meetings as well as, as reaching out to us individually. And before I open it up with uh, q and I do want to share, you might have all seen this. This was really a huge, huge win for our team. Uh, and kudos to Sergeant Ledesma and his team. But they were able to work with uh, Home Depot uh, on, a, on a ring that was really impacting their stores from the Sacramento, Sacramento area all the way down through the South Bay and really taking significant amount of, of uh, product out of their stores and it would be multiple stores in a given day. Um, my team worked this for several months and was it culminated with uh, several search warrants that we served in one of the locations, as you could see in this media piece, it looked like, uh, it literally looked like a, an aisle of Home Depot. Uh, we had other retailers that they had stolen from that we uncovered evidence for from Kohl's to Target and several other retailers. So this was a significant win and it shows the value of collaboration between um, the business community and our dedicated team. And we're here, we're here to try to impact this and really um, stop this at least in our community and saying, no, we're not going to tolerate that here. So with that being said, I would like to open it up for Q&A. And um, I believe the next slide, Daniel, has both our tip line. If you don't feel comfortable reaching out to us, to us directly, you can email or you can uh, reach out through the, the anonymous tip line or email our uh, organized retail theft um, inbox where the, the whole team has access to. Um, and additionally, we can... Um, we can get a list of contacts after the meeting, Daniel, of the, the attendees, and then we can also connect offline if you would rather have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with the team. And that concludes the presentation, so thank you. Great, thank you, Captain Amori. Uh, I did want to uh, prompt everyone that's an attendee in here in the webinar that there are there is a Q&A feature here in the, in the Zoom room, uh, you are able to enter in a written question and we will answer it both either live or in writing for you. Uh, there is one question already in the Q&A chat um, for the Sheriff's Office. 
Uh, and it goes back to your, uh, you mentioned about Home Depot using flock cameras. Um, and their question is, is Home Depot sharing flock data with you? Uh, they report, the uh, asker is saying that he reached out to them so they could add their flock cameras to the database, but they're not willing to. I'm going to defer to Sergeant Ledesma um, because he would, him and his team are boots on the ground. Uh, I don't want to misspeak, but I believe they provided situational data, not live access, but I'll let Sergeant Ledesma kind of clear that up. Yeah, uh, that is correct. So Home Depot and like Lowe's and other retailers that have active flock systems, they're not actively feeding into the law enforcement portal of flock. However, through our partnerships with them, if we have active investigations, if we have known vehicles that we are looking for, they have been super receptive and super, uh, um, they have been almost providing lifetime updates on, on persons of interest or vehicles of interest. So short answer is no, we don't have live feed into their flock. However, through the partnerships, we've been getting some good results. And I'll echo that the, the partnership is what really makes the this program really powerful. Uh, not just data access, but which is certainly helpful, but the partnerships that we're all trying to create here. Um, one other question we might have is, you've asked, uh, Captain Moore, you mentioned earlier reporting of retail theft is key to uh, tracking down criminals and potentially recovering your product. Um, can you describe how the office, the sheriff's office would re handle a, a incident of retail theft and what a business owner can expect? Sure. The easiest way is, is immediate um, reporting to the West Valley division through uh, county communications or 911 uh, patrol deputy specifically in Cupertino. They have a large patrol presence. So the response should be fairly Quick and if patrol can apprehend suspects on scene, they will. And if not, that report is vital. And then we have internal communication pieces in place where our hit hit team is notified very quickly. And um, typically, time is of the essence for them as well. But we have a number of of investigative techniques that we will pursue in in order to quickly track. Uh, these folks down. Um, additionally, I might say with the collaboration piece is uh, at times we've been very successful in, in deterrence and as well as apprehension and recovery of product by doing what's called blitz ops. And that's where we do focused enforcement and saturated um, patrols of, of areas of, of certain retailers. If you're on board, we can certainly collaborate with you. But what it really does is we get full service for that that day, that operational period, and we basically hammer every single theft, even if it's a petty theft on up to the organized retail, to really send the message. And we feel that one that spearheaded us to start some cases, but also has has stopped some of the influx of thieves because they know this store now is being being watched and monitored. So we're happy to collaborate with anybody that's, that wants to pursue that as an, as an option for them. Um, again, we would want to set up that meeting and, and go over details offline. Perfect. And so you mentioned um, setting up a meeting to uh, site visit and potentially discuss individualized uh, plans. Um, I'll take the opportunity to um, engage with Captain Valenzuela and the generally in the area about doing um, safety assessments with businesses and even private residences. Um, can you describe, Captain, the uh, process for requesting a, a safety assessment? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, you can request a safety assessment of the residents right now. We're not really set up for a business um, um, aspect of it, but um, if anybody if a small business definitely needs any kind of guidance or direction, we can definitely uh, collaborate with that business and give them our, our recommendations for uh, for uh, securing the, the property. Perfect. And we do have another question in the Q&A. Um, we'll answer this live. Do, the question is back to cameras. 
Uh, do retailers take on all the costs for upgrading parking lot cameras or does the Ca Santa Clara County Sheriff's Office or any other entity provide any funding assistance? Yeah, unfortunately, our office doesn't have the the funding to be able to install cameras ourselves. And additionally, when it does come to things like flock, we do have uh, limited flock in, in some of our contract cities and we're trying to expand to some of our incorporated areas. However, that's under very stringent um, review, approval and guideline processes through our board of supervisors under the the surveillance technology and community safety ordinance and therefore we would have to get approvals and typically it's in conjunction with the um, for us our contract cities that really want to pursue that technology to safeguard their their jurisdiction um, would typically help financially with that uh, and we would we would go through the approval process as far as for private property um, it's it's really on the individual business to to pursue that. And to to clarify that the city of Cupertino is per, pursuing flock or um, excuse me ALPR automated automated license plate readers in the city of Cupertino uh, to expand the the resources in the West Valley cities. Uh, for funding mechanisms, there it's possible that we. Uh, look at potential grant opportunities in the in the area, but uh, there are no local uh, funding sources at the moment. But we can uh, look for opportunities. We do you have another question um, from the city, the city of San Jose's Office of Economic Development. Uh, they ask businesses to report all incidents. However, some of the businesses business owners shared with them that they don't want to call the police because their insurance companies will reject to cover them or increase their premium. Uh, can you help address this concern to the business owners? I, I, I don't want to kind of speak out of turn for the city of San Jose itself. Uh, however, the sheriff's office urges all of our, our businesses and retailers to report theft. As far as the insurance uh, premium raises. I we don't have any interaction with the insurance companies, and that's really on the individual businesses on how they want to report that. But what I can say is we've been very successful in recovering property, and that really, in the in the end of the day, will help alleviate some of that loss experienced through theft. Um, and uh, additionally, building those partnerships and and forging relationships really helps with the quicker response and, and faster investigations. I know that doesn't really fully answer the question, but I can explain what what our office is um, policy and culture is. All right, thanks, Captain. Uh, another question has come in. When a theft occurs or is in progress, what type of information is essential to collect prior to calling 911 or uh, the sheriff's office? Uh, without the fear of being the, the only person speaking here, I'll let the lieutenant or sergeant answer this one. Yeah, so it's important to, to call 911 as soon as possible. However, um, our responding deputies need to know what to look for. So things such as uh, vehicle make, color, description, if you can get a license plate, that's great without getting too close to being in danger. And then we need to know who we're looking for. So, a, you know, general description of the suspect, clothing, approximate height, weight, um, are all things that can help us identify um, that vehicle or suspect uh, as we're leaving. You know, other details we can find out later, you know, the total theft amount, what was taken, if they were with anyone else, those are all right on the back end, but up front, we just need that, that brief description, vehicle and then personal, um, you know, description. And Lieutenant, I've I've noticed in my personal retail shopping and that in some businesses we're starting to see height markers on the exit doors. Are those kinds of tools effective? Yes, you, you'll commonly see those at um, I believe Seven Eleven and some other retailers have those as well. You know, that's just a quick way to identify an approximate height. Um, 
you know, I understand that when things are happening in the moment, adrenaline, you know, levels can raise and you might not be thinking clearly, but that's just a, a quick indicator on, on someone's height. Um, just another tool. Uh, you could probably uh, group that in with signage and other things that the captain mentioned during his presentation. Great. Thanks, Lieutenant. Um, are there any particular times where retail theft tends to occur more frequently? Sergeant Ledoux may want to handle that one. Yeah, so it's all retail dependent. So for some of our larger box stores, what we've noticed is usually around closing time, right? Um, so if your retail business closes at 11 p.m., you usually start seeing a hike around 9.30 to the closing time. That's for a variety of reasons, right? So it just depends on what kind of store you have and also where you're located geographically, right? If you're uh, closer to a freeway, uh, probably during less traffic hours, you're going to probably have a, a, a spike of theft, right? It's easier for the suspects to get away. So it's all really dependent on the business. And I know it's been mentioned before, um, but you guys can always reach out to our team and we are more than happy to do a business assessment and help you guys out to identify for your specific business what times would be the most uh, the most prudent to protect. Thank you, Sergeant. Can uh, can you describe any challenges that um, you, the sheriff's office, or your deputies on the scene would face in addressing some of the retail theft in in and around the West Valley area? Uh, I would say the biggest challenge is, is getting um, reporting in as soon as possible. I understand our retailers are busy. Um, you know, if if it's a smaller business, you might not have. Uh, you know, a dedicated loss prevention crew or security crew. Um, and, and I understand you have to run your business. But with that said, uh, when we get late reporting, it's it's extremely difficult to try to recover that material. Um, that property can move quickly, it can sell, it can be, you know, stored in various locations. And in order for us to really get a jump on the investigation, identify our suspects, identify where the property may be, um, it really helps to have uh, accurate and quick reporting. Uh, I'd like to touch on one other thing as well. You know, I, th I think the question of security cameras came up. And, and while we can't fund that at this time, um, there, there are really good and, and affordable camera systems out there. Um, some name brands, some that aren't, but that you can easily install yourself. They, they connect to Wi-Fi. And we're not talking about an elaborate camera system. This could be just, you know, a single camera at entrance and exit points. Um, that, that can be affordable to, to our retailers. And, and you'd be surprised uh, how effective they are in helping us solve crime. Great, thanks, Lieutenant. Um, are there plans around expanding the Cal Orca system to bridge offenders across multiple retailers in city and municipalities? This system does not seem to be leveraged in the South Bay as, as other areas around California. That's kind of a complex question. It it all it all really focuses on how dedicated individual jurisdictions are to this this crime. It's really uh, our systems are really only as good as the information that's put into it. So we do know we have identified jurisdictions that are very proactive, and we're very we very much leverage information and. Uh, intel bearing, um, but I can't say that is across all retailers. I do know that there are a number of agencies within our county that applied for the grant and are pursuing various measures, such as the Campbell Police Department, Palo Alto Police Department, San Jose Police Department, ourselves, and the District Attorney's Office. So, um, we have all had several meetings already to discuss our our individual approaches as well as how we can um, force multiply and collaborate with each other as well. Um, the DA's office grant is a separate grant. It's vertical prosecution related to organized retail theft. So they have a dedicated attorney assigned to retail theft. So they are very, they are very much uh, aggressively pursuing prosecutions as well as a, they have a dedicated uh, investigator as well. 
And great. You might have just addressed the next question here is, are there any pushbacks from the DA's office that you are facing around retail theft that can be addressed or adjusted by the um, by the business owners themselves? No, there hasn't been any pushback. It's quite the other way. They're they're eager to show that they are going to help impact this as well. Um, in an ideal world, we'd be so successful that they, they would have to figure out another way to, to leverage another attorney position to help prosecute these crimes. Um, and again, I can't speak for every jurisdiction, but I could speak for our office that we are very aggressively and proactively pursuing this in a number of of, of ways um, as I presented. Thanks, Captain. Uh, another question's come in. Can the sheriff's, o sheriff's office park a police vehicle in our parking lot overnight as a deterrent? I, I would have to defer to specifically for West Valley to Captain Valenzuela. I don't know what his resources are like. I have heard of this occurring in other jurisdictions, um, but it's probably something that we could um, we could pursue maybe on a case by case basis, depending on assets and resources. But that's probably something more to to have an individual conversation about. Yeah, at this point in time, um, we're, we're we're not utilizing that tactic, and the only reason is because uh, we've had. Uh, people people can see that the vehicles are unattended, and sometimes uh, they, we've had incidents of vandalism on our vehicles. So um, it's not necessarily a, a tactic that we deploy at this time, um, just because of the um, um, it, the appearance of the vehicle being there for a very long period of time or overnight. All right, I'll take the opportunity to remind all of our attendees that there is the Q and A feature. Uh, we have, you can enter in a, Q, a question in written form and we will either answer it live or respond in writing. Uh, the question, one of the final questions that I have are uh, the tactics that the uh, organized retail theft um, perpetrators use. Are there anything in particular that you would call out as indicators of um, potential theft about to occur or occurring that we should be more aware of? Sorry, what does you want to tackle that one? <laughs> yeah, obviously as a, as a retailer, you know your store and you know uh, usually the products that are most likely at risk of being stolen, right? Um, what we've seen recently is we'll have subjects walk in the store right before they walk in, they throw on a hoodie, they throw on a mask of some sort, right? This should all be clear indicators that that potentially a theft might occur, right? Not necessarily that one is occurring, but you might want to pay more close attention to what's happening. Um, obviously, if you have a, a large group of people coming in at one time in your store, that's always an indicator that there may be some type of suspicious activity and or theft. At that point, we're not asking you to call the sheriff's office because no crime has occurred. But if you then on view that there is a theft in progress, then for sure call the sheriff's office and uh, we'll send the appropriate resources to you. But yeah, just being vigilant of, uh, of, the, of your customers walking in, what their actions are before coming in, like I said, throwing on a hoodie on a hot day or a mask. Those should all just be indicators that potentially a theft may occur. And I, I guess that prompted another question for me, Sergeant, is if, you, if a retailer suspects that someone is going to um, commit a retail theft, should they call preemptively? or wait till something actually occurs? So uh, we've had retailers in the past call, like, hey, there's a suspicious person in, in the store. What usually will happen is our 911 dispatchers will ask follow-up questions, what exactly is happening, uh, get some more details on, on the actual incident. Um, retailers, if there's no actual crime that's occurred, retailers should probably expect a deputy to then call them to get more information. And sometimes in the past, we've seen that during the phone call with the deputy of explaining what's happening, then the theft actually occurs, right? And that way, the deputy is already on the phone with that reporting party and then can coordinate resources to apprehend the suspects. I, I want to segue in real quick, Tom, is uh, to add to that, we, we have seen cases where 
uh, a retail retailer is watching individuals and they think the theft is about to occur, maybe bringing the shopping cart towards the, the ingress or egress point, and then either something spooks them, whether it's that customer service piece we're talking about, whether it's noticing a certain camera um, that they'll abort and actually do not commit the theft and leave the items and then immediately leave the store. Uh, we've seen that happen. So again, by being vigilant and taking some other of the precautions that we, we mentioned, um, typically has a pretty good effect. Great. So it does sound to me that what we've all come become accustomed to over the over the years is if you see something suspicious, it's okay to call and allow the deputies and the nine one one dispatchers to help determine if there's something more uh, egregious occurring. Yes. All right. Well, it is ten forty seven. Uh, I don't have any written questions submitted into the Q and A feature. Uh, I'll do one last call uh, for Q questions to be submitted, but I'll start by thanking everyone for attending, both our retailers that are on, on the line and our interested parties, but the our sheriff's office. Uh, you can see by the sh number of deputies that we have here, both the captains, the lieutenant, and the, sh the sergeant here, that not only is the sheriff's office dedicated to this, but the city of Cupertino is dedicated to prevent uh, and prevent retail crime. I'll thank CEO of the Chamber of Commerce, Deborah Fang, for also lending her support uh, and the coordination for the businesses to help get more information about prevention and deterrence. So not seeing any additional questions. Can I just Daniel, ask, have, I'm, oh, I'm sorry to interrupt, Tom. Can I just sure. ask Daniel to maybe uh, share the last slide again real quick in case any of the retailers did not get our tip line or our ORT inbox and that way we can connect offline as well. Sorry to put you on the spot, Daniel. No worries, Captain. That's up right now. No, sorry, Tom, I interrupted you, but I just thought that might be beneficial to for them to Absolutely. see it. Absolutely. As we just talked about, reporting early and often is the bit, the best way to help uh, recover uh, stolen property. So once again, on behalf of the city of Cupertino, we are dedicated to help prevent and um, respond to retail theft. So thank you all for your attendance. Thank you panelists for your participation. We really appreciate your partnership. Have a great day, everyone.